We have, of course, been reporting extensively on the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 and police brutality on communities of color, but who's making sure that the often dismissed experiences are not lost from our history? This week, the National Museum of African American History in Washington began collecting signs, artwork, and stories from the protesters outside of the White House. And as our Devin Dwyer reports, there's a broader effort now underway to ensure that the voices of all Americans in these historic times are recorded for generations to come. In order to live and survive and get past what's happening, you have to be strong, you have to be resilient, you have to be positive, you have to know that this too shall pass. You have to look at your history. For Diana Hall, lessons from the past are often only as good as what was recorded in the present. Hands up! Don't shoot! Hands up! Don't shoot! protests for justice and equality after the death of George Floyd in a deadly pandemic still ravaging her hometown, Hall wants to make sure history gets it right. She shared her story as a D.C. public school teacher during the crises with the Smithsonian's Anacostia Community Museum. The history of what I went through is documented somewhere for my great-grandchildren to go look at, and that in and of itself just thrilled me. The museum's Moments of Resilience project, part of a growing global effort, gathering photos, artwork, poetry, and journal entries. There is this sense of urgency because of these current events that are happening around us. And so eight to 10 weeks in, um, it is really important for us to begin collecting these stories because as the country begins to open back up, a lot of those stories will be lost or forgotten. Much of American history has been told through the lens of white men. Minority experiences like the slaves who helped build the White House or the Japanese Americans who endured internment camps during World War II often glossed over or ignored. Historians are now working to make sure this moment is fully preserved from all viewpoints. The benefit is that we, we get the human dimensions of the crisis. We see the, the human face on the unemployment line, if you will. A worldwide repository built by a team of universities, a journal of the plague year, gathering more than 5,000 pieces so far many showing the double impact of COVID and civil unrest. Archives contain vast silences. They don't tell us the story of non-elites, folks outside the middle class, folks who aren't white. They may touch on them, they may hint at them, but we need to do a better job. We've said to ourselves, we want to recognize the diversity of the American experience. Images, audio and video capturing this unprecedented moment. One family showing how they now hose off before going indoors. Another sharing the power of painting together while sheltering in place. There are scenes of protest, New Orleans city waste collectors demanding PPE. Homemade crafts like this cross stitch offering reminders about personal hygiene and biases. A journal entry from a Vietnamese American healthcare worker recounts her frustration, describing microaggressions based on my race, saying just because we're Asian does not mean this pandemic is our fault. And there are voices from afar. Army Specialist Vincent Jochef writing from Afghanistan about the stress of watching his country in turmoil. <laughs> Everyday Americans with earnest stories. StoryCorps founder Dave Isay says the conversations we're having also need to be preserved. It's no politicians, it's no famous people, it's just regular people talking to each other. StoryCorps capturing hundreds of people telling their own stories in their own words, archiving them at the Library of Congress, the largest library in the world. This is really just about generosity and love, you know, so you can hear that in the voices. I mean, when you listen to interviews between two bus drivers or, you know, the people who are working, frontline healthcare workers talking to each other, just the PTSD, the devastation, how, you know, there, there are many people whose lives have been rocked in ways that are you know, incomprehensible to others. Florida postal workers Yvette Jourdain and Craig Boddy sharing what it's like to deliver the mail. I pray on my way to work. I pray on my lunch break. I pray when I'm at the boss. What keeps me going is the fact that I need to keep going. That's one of the tough things with coronavirus. We're like a lifeline, getting these people their medicines, their supplies. Independent photographers capturing the stories, too. James Trudeau tests COVID samples at a Baltimore hospital by day. After hours, he picks up his camera to document scenes he says many people might overlook. 
I saw this gentleman on a bicycle just like leaning up against a telephone pole and he said, you know, I have to ride my bike everywhere. I have to ride my bike to go grocery shopping and pick up my medication. So, he would normally take the bus right. or and, he would normally and, take a car. Right. And right now the, all the uh, transportation is for essential workers. His images are simple but captivating, a tapestry of resilience and resignation in extraordinary times. Trudeau says he's donating his photos to the Maryland Historical Society. What is do you hope people take from this? This is not the way things are supposed to be. You know, having to worry about going to work or, you know, not being able to see your loved ones. So never forget. Right, exactly. To remember and to learn, all of us have a part to play. Keep that journal that you've um, been doing. Keep that picture that your child drew that you probably put in your window. Take a picture of that chalking out on your front lawn. Keep all of those things because those will be important as we continue to tell this story. Making sure the history books reflect a history as diverse as we are. For ABC News Live, I'm Devin Dwyer in Washington. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.